For the Russian market, the Fiat Albia is equipped with only one engine. This is 1.4 to 77 horsepower, a very simple and old power unit. If the car is serviced on time, if the oil and other consumables are changed on time, if you use high-quality consumables and also refuel with high-quality gasoline, this power unit will not break down for a very long time. One of the most widespread problems associated with the engine is that the car's speed often fluctuates, and this happens in almost every album. The owners change the wires, clean the spark plugs and injectors, but nothing helps, the problem remains the same. The rear engine mount may make a knocking noise when you pull away. Often leaking antifreeze in winter, antifreeze can generally get into the cabin and drip directly onto the gas pedal. The manufacturer did not provide the buyer with a choice of gearbox, although most competitors, even in this budget segment, have an automatic, CVT, or robotic gearbox as an option. Here, only a 5-speed manual transmission is possible. The gears shift poorly, unclearly, and the gearbox is very noisy when driving. But it is very reliable, which is much more important for a budget car. The clutch lasts for a long time, at least 120,000 kilometers, but its release bearing begins to hum after 50,000. Make sure that the drive boots do not crack. They don't really like severe frosts. In general, the Fiat Albia can hardly be called a comfortable car, and it's not even that the interior is very simple. When driving, it is noisy, almost from the factory, over time, the number of crickets in the cabin only progresses. In the cabin, everything is so simple and the materials are so uncomplicated that there's nothing special to break here, and there's nothing to scratch either. A funny misunderstanding, the car seemed to be assembled here, but among the languages of the onboard computer there are English, German, French, Spanish and even Portuguese, but there is no Russian. The suspension pleases with its simplicity, although for budget cars it is quite a standard set in the front McPherson, in the rear the torsion beam is praised for the driving characteristics of the car. It does not have high controllability. In the steering system, the first thing that suffers is the tie rods, many owners think that since the knocking starts, it means that first of all you need to pay attention to the tie rod ends. In this case, this is not the case, the steering ends last a long time here. The steering rods will survive, God willing, 50 to 60,000 kilometers. The steering rack itself and the amplifier up to 100 to 120,000 are also unlikely to upset you. In general, when buying a used Alba, you should understand that 100,000 kilometers is exactly the resource for the suspension when it may require, if not serious, at least some investments. And the most vulnerable elements of the Alba's suspension are located not in the front, but in the back. The rear springs and shock absorbers do not withstand impacts well, that is, if you use your car as a truck, if you often carry passengers in the back seat, then your rear springs will quickly sag and the shock absorbers will leak front suspension. The weak point of the wheel bearings is manifested by their failure by a hum, that is, they begin to hum. Well, stabilizer bushings and control arm silent blocks are always the most vulnerable. Here they walk about 50,000 kilometers. The car body does not rot, the metal is good, scratches that appear are not covered with rust later. By the way, not every budget car can boast of this. Many car enthusiasts here are biased towards the Fiat brand. Well, firstly, these cars are no longer officially supplied to the Russian market, and secondly, there is an opinion that Fiat's are unreliable, but in Alba it's absolutely impossible to say that. Overall this car is quite reliable. It seems to stand apart from most other Fiat's and we can say that with normal maintenance it practically does not break down, and if breakdowns do occur, they are inexpensive to fix.